This is what the people want. The Q2 is a small crossover, the official car of the Aspirational Young Things, and it's made by Audi, official brand of the Aspirational Young Things. And to prove the point, it looks kinda quirky, at least by four-ring standards. Monstrous Q8 aside this is arguably Audi's least safe design, and you won't mistake it for any other car in its Russian doll-esque range. Especially since its 2022 facelift, which made the grille even more angular, and added extra Yorkwatcher referencing fake vents, because heritage. It's chunkier than an Audi A1 or A3, but it's little further from the ground in reality, so you're paying for the aesthetic rather than a looming presence over other road users. The Q3 and Q5 resemble what we've now come to know as SUVs, we'd argue the Q2's a little too meek in stature to fully qualify. Think of it as an A1 and A half all road. There's a punchy color palette, contrasting rear pillars and optional graphics to help provide visual razzmatazz. You can option giant wheels and the 2022 facelift also brought standard LED lights front and rear. While Audi rationalizes its fleet of engines, there's only one choice for the updated 2020 spec Q2, a 35 TFSI 1.5-liter four-cylinder petrol with 148 brake horsepower and 184 pounds-foot as standard this is one of the increasingly few Audis to come with a manual gearbox. It's front-wheel drive too, but upcoming higher-powered versions should offer Quattro AWD and the S-Tronic twin-clutch automatic both of which are standard fit on the quick one, the Square 2, which effectively shoehorns a VW Golf R powertrain into the Diddy Q2. Not that much of an ask, really, given the Audi is based on the same underpinnings as basically every small to medium-sized car in the Volkswagen Empire. Our Audi Square 2 review is here. As standard you get 16 inches alloys, a 7 inches media screen, aircon, parking sensors and a powered tailgate because lifting hatches is so arduous. As you'll have noted from the Q2 SUC on the roads, most are pumped out the showroom with bigger wheels, and therefore less don at Y tires, not to mention fancier trim inside. Prices start at around £23,000 but irrational desires for larger rims, contrasting black trim and darkened glass will soon see you a long way north of that. The Audi Q2 is okay. Praise at its faintest, you'll have noticed. But seriously, this is a car that's as difficult to lambaste with criticism as it is heat praise upon. It's small and neat enough to be a decent city car, and roomy enough for the needs of couples and small families, and, for once in Outerland, it looks a little divisive. We're just a little sad the quirkiness doesn't much continue beneath the skin, and that the Q2 falls straight into the same trap as almost every other crossover, the not especially interesting to drive trap. Worse still, on big rims it's downright belligerent. If you like the looks and care not about value for money or a decent driving experience, then go for it. Expect a car about as satisfying as a Waitrose microwave ready meal. If you're not fussed on a bit of extra styling chunk and do give a jot about how your car drives, though, shuffle over the other side of the Audi showroom and get a more convincing A3. In which case the Audi Q2 would appear not to be for the likes of us. It drives exactly as well as it needs to, and no more. When the VW Group launched the platform it's based upon, the cars upon it all felt sharp and keen, Golfs, Leons and A3S suddenly handled with a newfound flair. We were happy. With the Q2, there's very little to get your teeth into. The control weights are consistently lacking in any feel and the ride, if you spec an S-Line car with 18 or 19-inch wheels, is truly shoddy. You could argue that Audi buyers don't care about how the car handles, or how uncomfortable massive wheels make it, because of the badge, and there's likely some truth to that. But the Q2 is a classic case of a car feeling less premium than it could, because it's not been set up with much care. A Ford Puma drives like a much more expensive feeling bit of kit, for instance, because it doesn't tramp along like the tires have been rough cut from old breeze blocks. Of course, this is the small crossover way. With a handful of exceptions, Ford Puma, Mazda CX-3, Hyundai Kona, these things are usually pretty dowdy. Taller and more top-heavy than the hatchbacks they are based upon, and usually possessing engines tuned for low emissions, not high excitement, it's rare they do anything out of the ordinary. Which for the bulk of car buyers, is probably about right. It's just a shame the Q2 doesn't demonstrate as much verve dynamically as it does aesthetically, or pull off the Q5's trick of being much more refined and relaxed than you expect. 
because it needs to hit a low price point. It's saddled with a cheapo torsion beam rear axle, and frankly, you can tell it's got Dacia spec suspension from the first few yards. Our pick of the engines in the Q2 was the 1.0-liter tricylinder turbo, because it was perky when prodded but otherwise docile. While that's AWOL, you've got a choice of one, and while the 1.5-liter 4-pot is serviceable, it's nowhere near as pleasant to use as Ford's hybridified Puma powerplants, nor the chirpy triple Citroen and Peugeot slot into their crossovers. The 7 SPD gearbox makes the best of it, but this is not an engine that reeks of expensive German engineering. Similar frustrations ring true here. Everything works as it should, and is laid out with the usual Audi aplomb, but some of the materials are demonstrably worse than other Audis, such as a similarly priced A3 hatchback, while the stand-up sat nav screen stays standing, and doesn't descend coolly into the dashboard like it does in other models. Still, the virtual cockpit, aka digital dials, is present and correct, the nav and media systems work beautifully, and sync neatly to your smartphone, and you can have some welcome splashes of color inside to keep things light and cheery. But is cheery cabins why people buy Audis in droves?